Hey YouTube, how you guys doing tonight? Kevin here coming at you with another video. So, uh, well, what are we going to be working on? I don't know, but we got to get this stuff cleaned up. So I got to pick up a few things in here first and then get, uh, then we'll get started on our next project, which we have a lot of stuff to do. So I figured I would, um, what do you call it? They kind of dabble in this a little bit. And, uh, well, let me get this mess cleaned up, and we'll, uh, we'll see what the night brings us, alright? Right back. Alright, so, we got that cleaned up a little bit better there. Alright, so now we're working on Alvin's bike. Uh, remember I told you we're gonna go Dave's, Alvin's, Dave's, Alvin's, um, just to get these things out of here and done. Um, so we're gonna be working on dabbling on and see if we can fix a little bit of Alvin's bike. We're gonna start off small and work our way up. Basically, whenever you have something like that, it's cold in here, guys. I got the heater going right there. So, whenever you have a bike like this that you don't know what happened to it, and that's really the problem. We don't know what happened. We don't know anything about this bike, and Elvin doesn't know anything about this bike because he literally just got it, had it for a couple of days, and then, you know, send it up to me. So... Whenever you have a bike like this, and you're looking at it, and you have bad connections like this, one can get easily lost. Kevin, oh my god, the wiring on this bike is like, what happened, you know? Luckily, these two right here are for these lights. So we're going to go ahead, and do we always stop with the problem? No, not all the time. Sometimes it's easier to fix the little things first, and kind of work your way up to the big stuff. Now we automatically know because of where the coil is mounted. That's all incorrect. We have broken wires up in here. So what I'm going to hope to do tonight is to fix. Get that mounted where, it, where it's got to go. Get this wiring right here fixed. And start ripping apart some of this crap in the back here. And getting that out of there. Because well quite frankly it doesn't belong there because it's all hacked. So, I mean, you look at it, it's just, it's just junk. So, and we have this whole mess right here, you know, and it's just a whole bunch of, just a bunch of trash. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of all that and, uh, well, let's get into it. But before I do, please take a moment, if you guys like bike videos, working on bikes, fixing bikes, diagnosing bikes, all that happy stuff, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so when I post the video, you guys get it. All right, guys, let me get you guys in the stand and we'll get crack a lacking. One of the most hardest things to diagnose is electrical, especially if you don't have a book. Electrical is one of those things that is once you unplug something and you plug it in, like see right here, a green wire going into a gray wire. Sometimes you have wires that are two different colors going into each other. And what that does is this right here crosses the circuit into that other color, uh, other color scheme. Now in this particular case, this green and this gray are for your marker lights. These are the two positives for the right and the left side of the bike. And then they share a common ground and they have this one going up to a battery so uh, I don't know about the ground I thought there was another ground which could be under all this electrical tape in here someplace but sometimes in some cases they do go up to the battery because the battery will have two posts and one of these are here will plug into one so with with certain bikes you really don't know but that's okay that's what we're here for and that's what we're going to work on so this video is going to start a series on what is what is up with my electrical okay and when you have a bike that who knows what happened who knows why this bike has these directionals on here because they're not for the for the back they're for the front so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our cell phones and we're going to snap a photo of it okay now i can see where it was now later on if i have to go back to say which way did that come out i already took a picture of it 
So I have a picture of how it goes back together. Your cell phone or regular camera can be some of your best tools in your toolbox. And I mean that because you can literally, okay, I got to tear all this electrical out. I need to start taking pictures. Okay, this is this connector right here. This is how it goes. Take a picture of it. Now, later on, when you come back to the bike and say this wire is tucked way down inside here. Okay, we're just going to pretend this wire is gone. All right. Wait a minute. Was there anything hooked up on there? Now you can take your phone, flip through your pictures. Boom, there's a picture. There is a wire there. Ah, there it is, right here. Okay, that is the wire that goes to it. And there you go, you, fi you just fixed the problem. Okay, your phone is a very important thing. Um, drawing a schematic, you can use a pizza box. Flip it open to the brown side, draw pictures, draw wires, draw lights, draw whatever you need to draw, and mark them. Okay, so for this we know this wiring is all hacked. So... I am not going to take two moments and even be concerned about it. This wiring right here is all together and they soldered it. It's a ground. It really doesn't matter. So we're going to take our handy dandy strippers, which now became wire cutters just like that. I'm going to cut these free and then pull them through because they are not going to be no longer used on this bike. We are going to get rid of them all together. Alvin's bike is going to have the proper lights on it. Okay, there's one. And I'm going to pull... What's this? Got some kind of little tag in there. <laughs> That's the side. Okay. I'm just pulling it up. They really took the time to pull that wiring through, I'll tell you that. All right, so we get that one done. So we have, we know these two are our light wires. And I'm going to slide this down because I saw a whole bunch of electrical tape. I want you guys to see this. So electrical tape in itself can be factory because the harnesses are all typically taped up. But this doesn't look factory to me, so I want to see if there's any electrical damage in there. Okay. Nope, I don't see any damage to these wires. And it looks like this particular system does not have a black ground coming up out of there. So that's okay. So this sheathing right here is for the wiring to keep them water protected and safe like that and then i'm going to take one more look down there i do not see a wire for the um whatchamacallit there i don't see a wire for the directionals for the ground so that means it gets its ground from its battery perfect and then we have this wire right here which also has electrical tape we're going to pull that off don't be afraid to pull electrical tape off anything that's See, if it's, it's, if it's got a little flag on it like that, little flags of wiring tape mean something's either been damaged or they just didn't do it right. Well, something's going on with it. Okay, see right here. Perfect example. They have a, a glob of solder, a bad solder connection with the proper end. So this end is still good. You can see how nice and clean it is. So we're going to reattach that. But now we know. So instead of using electrical tape on this, we're going to take, we're going to cut that out. Where's my cutters? Right here. We're going to cut this on both ends. Like that. Okay, we're going to strip it. The wire looks good, which is good. We're going to reuse that part. We're going to cut off that glob of solder. See right there how they soldered that? It's not even soldered correctly. We're going to re-solder it together, and but we're going to use a piece of heat shrink instead of electrical tape that you, well, you saw what it did. Then we have this one. Okay, this wire right here is definitely clearly bad. You can see how it's actually showing through. So we're going to cut the end right off that ground. 
all together and that ground is now out okay we're gonna fix all the problems with this bike but when you when you're working on something like this you got to have a plan so what's the plan with this whole wiring mess is to take it apart piece by piece we're literally gonna stop here and we're gonna work our way back okay and that's what that's our starting point so we're gonna start from the back to the front and then we have this whole mess right here and you can see how it's just a big glob of mess right there so this is junk we're not going to use that and let's see okay we have a much nicer one right here with the two actual wires nice ends nice end nice crimp on that end a little bit longer to reach the battery so what we're going to do is we're going to plug this in and all we're going to do is we're going to match so you get your your blue wire here with the white and then you have a black stripe with the white wire we're just going to literally plug these back into them but before we do that we're going to put something in each one of these so they don't corrode or they don't get uh, corrosion in them over time i'll show you what that is so the product that we use, the product that we're using is dielectric grease. So what this does is this is for electrical. Okay, and this right here allows us to put a little bit of grease in the connector. And this right here is going to not only seal it, but keep any condensation or moisture out. And it's going to allow the connection to be longer lasting. Okay. Before we install this, we're going to inspect the fuses. Okay, so what we're looking for is, see that S right there? If it was blown, it'd be a black mark through it. And same with the other one. So one of these is a 10, one's a 20 amp. Alright, so one's for the headlights, one's for the regular electrical. And then, I know you can't really see it too well, but... I'm going to see if I can locate the color wire. I need my flashlight because it's way up inside there. Alright, so I'm going to take you guys on this journey. See those two connectors right there? I'm going to do it off camera in a second. I'm going to show you where they are. See right here where they are? These two ends right here are on this plug in for those. So I'm going to get those hooked up real quick. It's just too hard to show you guys. My hands will be in the way. And Oh, you guys will be in the way as well. So I just want to show and plug them into. Okay, so now we have the wiring for that. And that's going to get tucked down in here for now. And then we're going to take a look at this whole mess right here. This is the fuse. Oh, you got the fuse, the uh, holder for the, the, uh, the flasher. So we're going to make sure to slice that down, and we're going to bend this tab up like that, and then that goes back onto that, like so. All right, good. Just want to make sure that's in its correct spot. Location, 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 location. All right, so now we got the fuse holder in. That wire right there is going to hook onto the battery. There are two connectors on the battery. One we had cut off, so we have to solder that onto that little wire which we're not going to do right now. We'll do that at a later time. We'll just kind of go over the things as we as we see them. So we know we got to hook up the negative and the positive for the main harness. And that part's done. Neither Nothing up here has anything to do with Spark. Spark is on its own system. Okay? All right. So the next step is to get these lights ripped off the bike. You might be asking yourself, Kevin, if those are on there, why are you taking them off there? I'm going to tell you why I'm taking them off there. Alvin has a nice bike, and this does not look right. So, we're going to replace these with the factory style lights that go on this bike. There's a big giant bolt and electrical tape. Don't look good. 
but you can't deny it's not it's not a uh, it is a clever idea I'm not gonna lie to you they did a good job I'm just going to take these off and then take those big giant bolts off. I got to take all that electrical off. All that electrical tape. It's pretty thick. See how thick that is? Okay. So I use my pocket knife and cut the tape off. Now we're going to remove that big giant bolt. Off the back there if we can. Mm. Ah, nuts. That, my friends, is a big bolt. A lot of electrical tape on this bike. Okay. There's one. I'm going to rip the other side off. Okay, I got the second marker light taken off, and now i got to cut through that electrical tape and do the same thing as I did on the other side. All right, got the wad of electrical tape taken off, and now we'll get that nut off. Cool. All right, so now we got the second one ripped off, and the bike looks a lot better already. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start, uh, well, moving forward. There is nothing worse than having bad, sloppy, twisted-together electrical. These type of connections just simply fail. So what we're going to do is we're going to make them correct, make them right. So we've got a lot of broken plastic here. Let's see if we can get some of this plastic off. We can access everything. There we go. Got these two wires here. I'll pull them straight and I'm going to cut the slop off of them. There we go. All this bad caca gone. Okay. All right. So then those two wires have to be joined to those two wires. Typically, they would go through the connector, but the connector has been already been cut, and it's not going to make sense to solder these to here because it's just too small, so we are going to reconnect them to that part of the harness. However, they won't be able to come back apart, but that's okay. It's all one harness, so we don't really care about that. All right, the next thing is this ignition coil right here. We'll unplug that. All the wiring harness goes up and through into here. And you can see it's all ripped down. All just hanging down. Not into where it's supposed to go. It's just all over the place. Disconnect the magneto.
And we're going to zip tie that up. So it's kind of out of our way. But looks decent at the same time. Okay, so put that up in there like that. Flip this around this way. Put that up inside there and we're going to make that hook. We're going to make a zip tie right up through there. Clean that up a little bit. Make it look a little nicer. You notice how the bike is automatically looking nicer as we're doing this. And the reason why it's looking nicer is because we're putting things back to where they need to be. Where they're supposed to be. Where they belong. That is huge when you're working on any type of bike. Is to make sure you're putting things back to where they go. You're making them look decent. You're making them look right. And then as you're doing it, the bike as a puzzle piece will literally fall together. Okay. See, these are two pigtails back here. I'll take a moment, cut my tab off. Okay. Make sure that nice and snug it in there. Yep, like that, good. And I'll cut that tie. Cut the end off. And then I'll take these right here. And I'll kind of Leave out my gray my my gray wire. This black wire right here goes up to the magneto. And then the rest of this stuff right here can just be zip tied together. Now you're probably asking yourself, why are you zip tying that together now? I'm zip tying the stuff now to get it out of my way. That's where it's going to go. I don't need it hanging down and making a big giant mess. And now everything looks good. So we're going to take and going to cut the was a little closer. Those are the ones that were hanging down that are not going to be reconnected. We want the bike to look nice. This is going to be connected to the red. The gray is going to be there. We're going to have to put a little gray wire as a jumper in between them, but you're not going to be, it's not going to matter because it's going to be soldered with heat shrink. Okay, now we're going to take this, um, what you call it there? This wire right here from the Magneto. We're going to put this up in here and we're going to zip tie that one. So it's up and in there. And it's all out of my way. Okay. Now that's out of my way. Wiring all looks good. I'll tuck back in. Then I can just match these two right here. Okay, a little dielectric grease on my connectors. Can you guys see all right? And then I'm just going to match my wiring. Plug it in. Plug it in, plug it in. And then kind of tuck them out of my way. Okay, tuck you out of my way. Okay, good. So now the wiring, as you can see... Everything looks good, except for this black wire right here goes up to my coil. And then the gray wire, which hooks up to this gray wire, the red wire hooks up to the other red wire. And then we're good to go. Okay. Down this. Up there. Okay, so the wiring just needs to be reconnected, guys. Okay. Now, we have back up in here. We have this big heavy harness. And this big heavy harness, I feel, shouldn't be where it's, where it's at. So we're going to unplug that one and put this, tuck this back. And then we're going to plug this back in to 
to this side. What I did was I created this big fat harness is now tucked back in nice and tight. Now I got my gray and my black wire here. Uh, gray and, my gray and red wire, I should say. I'll put them on the other side so I can easily get to them. Like that. Okay. So now I got my red wire, which can be easily connected there. The gray wire is going to need a, a jumper wire, which is no big deal, and that's my coil. All right, so now I'm going to undo the ground. See how they have this ground going through the bolt? Right up in here, this one here. And there is no bolt on the other side, which I'm assuming is already into the coil. So I'm going to get those all taken apart, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I pulled the coil off, and it was missing the spacer, the washer, and the nut. And that's what it's supposed to look like. So now I'm going to go ahead and bolt this down, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so we now have the ignition coil bolted up and back of where it goes, and it goes in from the other side. Um, I didn't show that installation. It really just goes through here with a ground on one side. You guys have seen me bolt these up a, a bazillion times, and this particular one, everything was in the way, so I really couldn't show you anyway, so I figured I'd explain it. So you have this wire right here comes off your ignition coil. This little wire right here goes up to the kill switch and then this wire which is a single comes off your electrical harness and goes up to the two wires. So there's supposed to be a little jumper wire that goes in between here. One has a two one and the other one has some uh, male that goes inside of here. So we got to put that on which I do not have at the moment. I'm going to have to make one up which is not a big deal. So these two are here plugged together and then this one plugs they plug into here and then that right there is it. Um, I do have to double check on that because sometimes on some of these bikes, the way it works is the ignition coil plugs into here, like so, and then this one right here plugs in back of the headlight. So we're gonna have to pull the headlight off and, and check that out and see if there is a kill wire underneath the headlight. Um, so I think that's how this one is. I gotta double check that. Sometimes I feel like I worked on too many of these bikes. <laughs> so knowledge is power guys and this is where experience kicks in. So that one wire right here, remember I told you it would normally go into two wires? That's on a KE100. This is a KE125. So, so you don't get confused. Your coil wire plugs into the single wire. So there is no jumper wire on this particular bike. Some bikes have a wire that plugs into there and goes into two, and it goes up to the kill switch. You, that will also work, but this bike right here, these haven't been touched. So, and that, I'm suspecting, is the original coil. So, that's all fine. So the one wire from the coil plugs into here. They had the kill switch wire. Ran through. And it was tucked up on, under here through this hole, this wire right here. So this wire right here was sitting up like this, and that's where you think it would go. That ain't where it goes. I'm going to show you where it goes. Okay. So if you have a KV-125, the wiring comes up through the back of the headlight bucket. And actually, this one's right here. And you, if I, if I can pull it down, you can see it. Hold on one second. Get the right correct wire here. Because they have a whole bunch of stuff out. Right up and back here. Hey, you are, you little sneak. It's a black wire with a white stripe. Let's see if I can pull you up and show you. Okay, right there. I'll get you in this position here. So this wire right here, you can see the white stripe, the black wire with the white stripe. That's where this wire for your kill switch plugs into. Right up inside there. And then it gets tucked up and back. And that, my friends, is the kill switch wire. So now, right now, the ignition is all connected. Okay. So, all that's left over here to do is connect those two wires right there. Everything else is connected and is all set. And I got to put the end back on the spark plug boot 
and then hopefully we have spark I gotta check the points and condenser not a big deal and then we just have to wire in the back of the bike back up in here put the lights on it and the electrical part portion of this bike is done I'm hoping to ride this bike so that's what I'd like to do is get the spark on it get that all situated and squared away so well that's it for at the moment I'm gonna uh what do you call it? They're head in the house, get a bite to eat, and then I'm going to come outside, and we are going to do those two wires. So I will talk to you guys in a little bit. Alright, let's go and uh, attach those two wires. I dug this bad boy out of the back, and while well, we'll be working on this thing later on. Not in this video, though. But uh, let me get it opened up, and we'll get crackalacking again. Alright, let's get back into what we were doing. Alright, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a patch. What is a patch? A patch is when you have two wires and you have this connector right here, but clearly the two wires on both sides of the connector were brutally cut. Instead of cleaning up the connector, that's what they did. So, what we're going to do is we're going to bypass these two wires right here and we're going to put these, this red wire to this red wire, this gray wire to this gray wire. Let me get you guys in the stand and I'll show you guys how I do this. And I do this because I want an absolute solid connection. Alright. Just making sure you guys can see alright. Alright, so here's the wires right here that I'm working. Now clearly I can't just grab these two wires and yank them down and stick them over and put a butt connector on there. And I'll tell you why. Butt connectors are junk. Especially on a dirt bike. And I'll tell you why. Okay, so there are three types of connectors, all right? There is, this is the heat shrink one. So you put your two wires in. So I'm gonna take these two wires right here. I'd stick these into each one. And then I would take a heat gun or a little torch and I would heat this area right here and it would shrink wrap around the, uh, the wire. And then there's this style right here, which is a regular standard butt connector where you take, you put your two wires in, you slide them in and then you crimp them down on both ends and then you're done um, I have a problem with both of these connectors and I'll tell you what they are so when this is up inside here water kicks up and gets inside where that terminal is okay that terminal will actually turn the wire green corrode it and then it will break off and after a while the wire is actually still inside there but it's not making a connection and this right here will will give you a false, um, you'll think that the wire is connected when it's actually not. That's the first one. The second one, this keeps out the corrosion in the water, but you're probably saying, well, why is that one bad? If I was to use one, I'd use that one, Kevin. All right, so I have had more than a dozen of these come in that people put on their bikes. And what happens is they loosen up inside here and give you an intermittent. So the wire can't pull out, but it doesn't mean it's not going to have a good connection in there either. Um, so I've had these style fail. Now there is a third, a third one that I use, which is what I'm going to use on this bike. And it is literally the proper way of fixing any broken wire. All right. So let me get set up and I will start doing that. All right, so one of the things I'm going to do now is I'm going to make my jumper wire and get that to the right length. So I'm taking the same gauge wire, same thickness in all that red wire, and I'm going to measure out how much I want. I'm going to give myself a little bit extra. That way I can always cut it down or do it some other way. Okay, and now I'm just taking my strippers. I'm going to strip my ends down on it to how I want it. Looks good. Make sure you don't cut into those the strands of wire. I didn't, which is good. And that's one. Now, I don't have a gray wire of that gauge. But I do happen to have an old junk directional set that has the proper gauge wire. And it's the correct one. So, I will then take that and I will cut it down to use it. And then I will make that one. It's going to be perfect. So 
thickness, same gauge. Bring that right over to here. Okay, give myself a little extra. I don't like using connectors because especially if you have to use a, um, what do you call it there? If you have to make extra long jumper leads like we have to here, um, then I have four butt connectors to deal with. And that's just crap. Don't want to do that. There are two different ways of doing this. You could solder the end of this one, solder the end of that one, and touch them together like so. You can do it that way. Or you could twist them together. There's different ways you could do these technique I'm going to use, I'm just going to twist them together. You can see how they're twisted together like that. I'll show you. i going to use some solder. Get my iron hot. Not quite. There we go. Okay. It's going to be a little harder to solder in here because it's like 32 degrees out right now. You want to get the, uh, so you're going to put the heat on the back side and the solder on the front. Just like that. Okay, now, if you saw how I did that, I had the solder and iron on the back side. I had the solder and iron on the back side. I'll do it on this one here with a little bit of a close up. All right, so we'll do it on that red wire right here let's see if i can get you guys focused in on that okay so we're going to do this red wire right here real quick all right so i'm going to take my wires like i said there's two ways you could do this you can solder them together like that or you could twist them i'm twisting them i'm doing the twist technique and solder i just like how they go together a little tighter oh a little tighter and then see that's why it's harder to do I might have to ship this back one more time all right I'll show you another thing I do okay I tried showing that but it wasn't gonna work out too well for me all right so what I did was to hold the wires together I used an alligator clip and then I twisted the wires together and now I can solder them and I'm gonna do it the same exact way heat on the back side and I'll put a little bit of solder on my iron first that way it can penetrate through it, the heat. Put the heat up for a second, and then I'm going to put the solder to the front side of it. Yeah. yeah, hold on. Okay, once you get it soldered like that right there, that's a solid connection. Okay, after you get your connections done like that, let them cool. And then you can literally fold them over. I'm going to fold one this way. So it's like that. You want a good, solid connection. And then this one right here, I'm going to fold this way. Like so. So now when they're in the harness, you can see one's up here, one's down here. They're not at the same spot where they could chafe through and cut. All right. So once you get them like that, now what I'll do is I'll take a piece of heat shrink. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'm going to take a piece of heat shrink. So I have this box that's got all kinds of heat shrink tubing from 3M. See if I can shrink you guys down here. From 3M. And it's got all different colors in it. And I've got a big one that has all just dark gray. Um, these literally are the best connections you can use whenever you're doing any type of wiring. A little piece like that side here like so turn on my little torch and then he's shrinking you're just using the heat of the torch not the flame to heat it And there we go. We have a good solid connection. 
right there and I'll do the other tent the other one right now I don't have any gray but I do have dark gray so we'll use that as well on this one like so shrink that up for a good solid connection And that, my friends, is how it's done. Just like that. Boom. You can see the, the heat shrink. The secure. No water is going to get into them. And it's a solid connection. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other two wires. Okay. A couple things you want to make sure you do. So I finished off the red wire. You can see that's all soldered in there. First thing you're going to want to do when you, when you finish off a, a loop... You want to slide your um, heat shrink on first, up as far as it can go away from the heat. Second thing, at the front here, there's a little sharp edge, okay? That little sharp edge right there could pierce through it. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your cutters, and you're going to want to cut that very edge nice and flat so it's not, um, not going to protrude. Now, there is a couple people going to be like, Kevin, that is not how you solder that. You solder them like this. You can. You can solder them like that. You could twist them. Either way is good. Um, I twist them because when you twist two wires together, it is stronger than butt connector to butt connector. Um, you're not going to see any of this. It's all going to be tucked up underneath there. So when it's like that, it's perfectly fine. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, and when you heat shrink, you can still get a good seal, good clamp style on both ends. There's multiple ways to do it. If you go like this, it does look nicer. All right, it doesn't have the bubble. It's just two wires like that, heat shrink, but you still see the, the two together. Um, either way, you're going to see heat shrink when you look at the wires, and it's really not going to affect anything. So just first off, make sure you put your heat shrink on. I twist them together, and like I said, if you have a little sharp edge on the end, take your little thing and cut them off. Now, as a safety precaution, I'm working on the t I'm working over the engine. I have the spark plug installed. Never work on an engine without the spark plug in it, because this is one of those things. If I cut that tip off and that spark plug wasn't there, it could literally go into the hole. And you also want to see, or you want to when you're cutting. You want to make sure that you can see the direction that that little piece comes off and where it goes. All right. Those are a couple of tips when you're doing this type of stuff. And you just want to kind of take your time. So when you're soldering, you want to have, I'll use this connector right here. Okay, this, this wire. So you want to put the heat on the back side and your solder on the front. This right here gives you good penetration between all the strands of copper or whatever you're soldering. All right, so you want to make sure that the heat's on one side and that the solder is on the front side. And that makes a good connection. Um, a cold solder joint is basically if you have the solder on the back side there and um, you let it penetrate from the back forward, that does a couple of things. It overheats the insulation and gives you a bad connection because you're not getting full penetration. When you're doing this, you're actually welding the wires together. So that is what we're doing. That's what we did. So we want to, um, what do you call it there, make sure you're doing this correctly. Because it can be a pain in the neck if you don't. And then I'll just heat shrink that up. And always keep an eye on your environment, okay? Like you don't want to be doing this near gas lines, carburetors, or anything like that. Um, with an open flame. If that was the case, I would use a heat gun, um, which will do this exact same thing. I'm just making sure that my connections are good and that I'm soldering this thing and everything's all squared. Okay. So, guys, that's it for the wiring up in here. Then this stuff right here can all be tucked back out of sight, out of mind. Now, when the gas tank goes on it, that will be all set. Now, the next step is to take off the flywheel. 
happened to look over, I was going to take the flywheel, but the flywheel is already loose. I put the, went to see the socket, but oh, the flywheel is already loose. Huh. Okay. So when your flywheel nut gets all beveled over like that, you need to throw it away. And of course, there's no washer. Here's a flywheel key. First thing I do is inspect the magnets. This flywheel looks like brand new. Oh, snap. Can you guys see that right there? So it looks like they have new points. And someone tried to put a condenser in. And it's just a big glob of solder. And I don't like the way that's connected. So we are going, oh, oh, jeez. Okay, guys, here we go. Now we're on it. Okay, so he wasn't able to get spark on this thing. So somebody took a screwdriver, stuck it through the window. Oh, yeah, right there. See, there's the signs of it right there. See that? That's telling me that they stuck something in there. And look what happened. It killed the magneto right there. Cut those windings there. And a big scratch it right there. This one might be okay, but I don't trust it. So it looks like the magneto on this thing is porked. Yep, porked. So we're going to have to go and replace these two lighting coils, which I have. Um, this is why I don't sell things, guys, because if I sold them, I wouldn't have them for this build. And then this bike would be dead in the water. So we're going to have to then get in there and replace these two coils right here. These are your lighting coils. This fine one right here is your um, charging. So what would happen would be the bike would run in this scenario, right, providing that right there was fixed. So the bike would run. However, the lights would not work. You would get no charging. And then the person who was working on this bike would be like, okay, I'm getting, Kevin, I'm getting no lights. I have no lights going on. Um, I bought a new regulator. I bought all new light bulbs. I checked the fuse. What is my problem? Well, I didn't know you did that to it. You know what I mean? So that is why you never, ever, 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 ever stick anything in those windows to hold that from rotating. How do you do that without a, um, a spark plug hole? You take the spark plug wire, the spark plug coil wire off. You remove the spark plug. You stick a shoelace down there or a nice clean piece of string. You rotate it until it jams up and then you can take your nut off. Alright, so that right there guys is going to be on another video. But I do want to take a moment and show you guys something else. Here is what the um, cover looks like right here for the oiler. And that is the same exact oiler setup on my Suzuki DS100. Ain't that crazy? So anyway guys, we have... Elvin's wiring up here, done. The coil is remounted over here. We found the problem why it's got no spark or bad spark, which is right here. And we found out why the lighting is not going to work until we fix it, which is right here. This wire right here, you guys by Kevin, yeah, what's that way I go? This is for your neutral safety light. This is missing the neutral safety switch, which is right here, where this plug is. So someone put a plug in that. To, um, instead of fixing the problem, they plugged it right there. But this wire right here goes on to here. So we have to see if we can locate a sensor. And this is the intake boot right here. And you can see how it's all ripped. That is going to create dirt ingestion and engine problems down the road. Um, we might have to fix it. And you can see this is the fuel line coming through. And it's stiff as a board. So we're going to get rid of that and replace that as well. So we have some stuff to do, guys. And I'm going to show you guys a cool trick with these um, things later on. So anyway, guys, that's what I have for you for today. Hopefully you guys learned something and saw something cool. And now you know the proper way of making little jumper wires. Always use the same thickness wire. Don't go, um, don't go changing the wires. Use um, solder and some um, heat shrink. And then that is solid connection. That's not going to go on them. The bike will fall apart before that happens, before that breaks. You know what I mean? That's a solid 100% wire right there. So that's what we want. Plus, it looks good. It'll be up out of there. You won't see it. You won't notice it. Um, the tank will be right here. So it'll be out of the way. 
And then we have this. Got to put the end on that because that tested bad. The wiring is all up in here. Then we just got to do the ground here and one positive wire up in there. Mount the two marker lights on. Fix and rebuild that magneto, which I'm going to do on camera, so don't don't worry. We're going to do this. This is going to be a part two to this electrical part of the video. And then we got to uh, basically switch the tire around, check the carburetor. Um, on the next video, we're not going to do any more electrical on this bike at that present moment. What we're going to do is we're going to jump ship. We're going to head over, and we're going to pull apart the carburetor, um, which is underneath this cover, and there's the reason for that. Because if I have to order anything, I need to see before I place my order. Because I have I have a couple of charge coils, but I want to make sure I have everything I need. So I'm going to do my inspection on the carburetor and see if the carburetor is good. The bike's been sitting for a while. I can tell you right now it's got wrong screws in it. And if I didn't know any better, that right there looks like a household screw. Um, I could be wrong. Let's just zap that off real quick. I have my Milwaukee M12 here. Yeah, okay, that, that ain't right, so that's not going back on there. Um, and yeah, so we'll pop that off, do all that type of stuff. How much work is going to be to take the cover off? Okay, sorry about that. All right, and now we're gonna zap off that last screw over here. Get that one out. And then that cover right there is off, except for these two 10 millimeter uh, nuts, bolts. Okay, got my 10 millimeter wrench. These are here, yep, came out pretty good. Zap these out. Normally I would just use my M12, but it's on the other side. Okay, that was just taking too long, so I took them off. Okay, and it's a gasket. Try not to break the gasket if you can. No, nope, looks like it's gonna break. Yep, it broke. It's all right. We'll replace that. And there's your carburetor right there. Wang, wang, wang. Okay, enough of that. So, there's the carburetor right there. And, well, this thing is just, these lines are so hard. Look at that. That You can't, this stuff is solid. And here's where your fuel line comes in, goes up through, comes off that intake. So, we're going to have to remove all that stuff. Wow. That is a vent, looks like. Yep. The vent there. Oh, yeah, gaskets. Okay, yeah. So, we'll get some gaskets for this thing. Not a big deal. We can do that. I'll just make one. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to end it there. So now we know what we're looking at anyway. Whoo! It's coming along, guys. Coming along. Spark plug right there. And this is for a second plug. Or if you have a high compression head, you can put a, uh, a compression release right there. It's perfect. Perfect for that. All right, guys, well, I want to say thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, and uh, thank you for hanging out with me on Alvin's bike. And we're just going to keep going through them like we always do, you know. Next step, we're going to pull this carburetor off. We're not doing this today, but we're going to pull it off. This is this plug right here that is normally for your KE100s to um, take off the uh, carburetor. On the KE100, that is for your idle adjustment. And on your idle adjustment on the KE, you have the little twisty up top. It's down, actually down here. You pull that plug off to adjust your idle speed. So it's pretty neat. Um, so yeah, and these carburetors right here bolted in with a little flange bolt back there. And one on that side as well, which is kind of a hard thing to get to. Some of them are clamped on. Oh yeah, this one, this one's not clamped. This one um, pushes in. So pretty neat, but we'll get into all that at a later time. Alright guys, once again, thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for subscribing. And uh, thank you for working with me on Elvin's bike. This is going to be a great bike when we're done with it. We have so much stuff to do, guys. So much stuff. And um, so we're going to be taking a break after we get that carburetor off. We're going to slap the carburetor onto this bike and uh, do a first start. I have not heard this thing run. 
So we have a lot of stuff to do, guys. We have a lot of stuff to do. And we got to get on Dave's bike again. Um, we got to do the uh, clean up the engine and start assembling that. So we have a ton of stuff to do. A ton of stuff. Plus we have, before we do the... Um, we're going to do a first start on this bike, but we're not going to get crazy into it because I got to clean off. This table right here has got to be cleaned off next because we have an engine to take apart and do, which is that one right there is going to be next on the docket. So, like I said, we have a ton of stuff to do, um, and it never seems to end. And I'm not complaining. That's a great thing. So, anyway, guys, I'm off for now. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. And please give a thumbs up. And I will talk to you guys later. I'm out.